How long do you guys sleep on average at night? You guys get eight hours. They recommend eight hours. Try to get hours, six right? to seven. Never. I get like three, maybe. Mm. Four or five. Ten. Yeah. You get ten? Oh, I'm God, a sleeper. I'm so ten hours? I wish. I am a sleeper. But what time are you going to bed? Eight o'clock? I usually go to bed. Well, when I work here, I don't get eight hours of sleep. Also, I found I'm funnier when I've slept less, so I think it works better for me. But when I'm not here, yeah, I get like 10 hours of sleep. I go to bed at like 10.30. And, and then you I wake go. up at, at like 8 in the morning? Yeah. I actually, I could sleep 14 hours a night. Like, not a problem. Really? Yeah, when I was a kid, it was an issue. Like, I could sleep all the time. Do you have, like, blackout curtains, or just, it doesn't matter? Lights, sounds, nothing matters? Um, sound, well, I have, an, I have a horrible neighbor who plays Call of Duty all the time, so that's tough because it sounds like there are Lewis? gunshots going off in my apartment all the time. I feel like I'm living on the front lines. <laughs> but when he's quiet, then, yeah, I can sleep. Like, I don't have blackout curtains, but I don't have windows in my room. But even before then, like, I have always been able to sleep for, like, an extraordinarily long time. One time when I was a kid, I fell off my bed, and I hit my head on the nightstand, and I busted my head open in my sleep, and I didn't wake up. Oh, my God. I know. I woke up covered in blood. It was quite terrible. Oh, my God. I know. With a concussion, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I'm, it hasn't affected me, I hope. Uh, I, I was under the impression that, like, legally, in order for it to be called a bedroom, it has to have a closet and it has to have windows. Mine is a junior bedroom, I think is, like, the technical name for it, and it costs so much money. Thank you, Miami. Oh, my God. Chris, how, how long do you sleep a night? It depends, obviously, but uh, I well, try to get six. I, like if I'm asleep six? by midnight, up up around six. That's I, I try to do earlier that's where than I try that. To be too. And usually late in the week, like most of the week, it's that by Thursday, I usually it catches up with me and yeah. I go to bed earlier because I'm tired. But generally six hours. I don't T- know how you do it. I, I I'm Tony. What do you do? I try to get in bed by like eleven. I've been trying to be better about it by like ten thirty, eleven. Try to be in bed and then wake up at six thirty seven. You know what I'm realizing? Well, no wonder y'all don't be having all these basketball takes I be wanting y'all to have. Because I be staying sleep. up to watch the Kings in the game. Like, every night. Like, I will stay up to watch every late game. So, that's probably contributes to why yeah. I don't go to sleep. West, like, West Coast living, buddy. Also, my wife doesn't want to watch Kings Sons, so it's a problem for oh, me. Oh, yeah, you're uh, mad. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah salute my sister. That. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like Jeremy. I get, like, four to five hours a night. And not, like, because, like, Oh, I got stuff to do, whatever. I'm just, I don't sleep. Like, I wake up. Even if I have nothing going on, if I go to sleep early. So I've had, earlier this week, I went to sleep at 10. I was just tired from a long day. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning. And then I just, well, I'm up now. So I just stayed up pretty much. I, it's, I don't, I can't I got a hold. concept for you. I'm just in shock. go back to sleep. <laughs> I can't. I got a concept. Marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then I wouldn't wake up again. I'd be just in bed all day long. I, but I bring all this up because apparently Sydney Sweeney has me and Jeremy beat. She's got Juju beat. She's got everybody beat. She sleeps two hours a night. I take a two-hour nap, like, every day, so I don't know. That is that is just absolutely batshit crazy. Dakota Johnson has the better answer. She yeah. came out, and she was like, I sleep 14 hours a night, and that's my girl. She gets me. Two hours a night. Which, she also doesn't drink coffee, she said. I don't drink coffee either, so I understand that. Neither do I. But two hours a night, shout out to Cam and Mace. <laughs> Big cap. Big cap. Big cap. There's absolutely no way. She sleeps two hours a night and doesn't take any naps. And then, and then, is she call. Cosmo Kramer? Or, <laughs> or, or maybe she is just an avid skier. Wow, that is reckless. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hit it. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, yep, it's buffering. Time to throw away all journalistic credibility and get reckless. Here is something we like to call reckless speculation. Be careful, you're good. If Sydney Sweeney only sleeps two hours a night, doesn't drink coffee, and doesn't take naps, she might be Peekaboo Street out here. <laughs> wow. Wow. A reckless accusation. Speculation. Uh, I'm speculating. Are you speculating she, or she are you accusing? Be, she might be in speculation. She is as an accusation. She might be Peekaboo Street. Fantastic name, though. Peekaboo Street is one of the top five names ever. <laughs> Salute to sis. We need to have her as a guest on the show. You know what? I agree. I love you, Peekaboo Street. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant Sydney Sweeney. Uh, I love Sydney Sweeney, too. I love all of them. I'm a believer. Her life is very, very fun. So it's like, why would I go to sleep? Look at my menchies.
<laughs> What's up on the benches? <laughs> I like that Amin said all of them. Like, just all women. I just love I love all of them. I do. He loves you. everybody, man. He's a lovable guy. Like Larry David. Do you guys, you got no one watches Curb though. The problem is, I do. I just haven't caught I up on the season. I watched yet. the whole oh, season. Sorry. You, are you you up to date, Juju? Hell yeah. Okay, so one of the things that happens is Larry. This is not really a big spoiler. It's a very C level story. But Larry has some cheese. He doesn't want to have it in his car all day. Just thinking up the car. So he asks Jeff and uh, uh, Susie, "Can I leave it in your fridge? I'll pick it up later or tomorrow." So he comes back tomorrow. They've eaten the cheese. And Susie's response is, possession is nine-tenths of the law. So, you know, it's in my fridge. I eat it. What are you going to do? I don't do know that? if that holds up in court, by the spoiler way. Spoiler alert. Sorry. Eh, it's not that much of a spoiler. Not that much of a spoiler. Because that, that was in the, in the like, preview trailer for the next episode last week. So not a spoiler at all. Speaking of spoilers... Caitlin Cart, they almost got spoiled the other night by West Virginia. Now, we got my sister in the building finally to give more elaborative details on the experience. Sis, talk about it. Lucy Rodine, Iowa correspondent. Love it. It's so good. How did he do it? I can just get down there sometimes. (laughs) Uh, Can you? Can you get down there sometimes? Okay. Yes, I was at the game. I was at both of Iowa's first round games. Um, I w- uh, wasn't my favorite game I've ever watched. Um, yeah, I didn't love it. Exciting though, right? Like nail biters are more exciting than. Yeah, not when all my happiness and joy is staked on this one team. Like, no, I think it's better, dude. Oh, no, you want? I would your have rather favorite, won by a hundred. You want your favorite team to just have blowouts all the way through? Yes. <laughs> I would love that. That would that would be oh, really man. awesome for me. Um, Iowa actually struggled a lot in the first game too, which people really didn't talk about. Holy Cross really like it was tough for Iowa in the first half. More Our like team- more like unholy cross, am I <laughs> right? Thank you. Wow. Are teams doing oh. more than they did in the regular season during the tournament in terms of doubling and stuff? Um, not necessarily. The way to beat Iowa isn't to double Caitlin Clark. Like you can double Caitlin Clark and she's going to score. The the way to beat Iowa is force Caitlin Clark to score all the points. Mm. Iowa has a better record when Caitlin scores less points and the supporting cast scores more. I believe Iowa has a losing record when she scored over 40 or 50 points because if you isolate Caitlin, she can score 50 points a game, but she can't score 100. Mm. She can't score 90, and that's no you know shot to her. Right. And so you really saw West Virginia come out, and they just – Iowa struggles with the press, and West Virginia was – Pressing the entire game. Press and Virginia. So, press Virginia, exactly. And so it was wild to see a, such a low-scoring game uh, for Iowa under, I think it was like around 60 points. It was tough. It stressed me out quite a bit. But I will say one of the coolest things ever is Rose and I kept her phone on like a little decibel tracker the entire time. Oh, yeah? It got up to, I believe, 115 decibels yeah. in the arena. 110 with booze at one point, And I thought that was very special. What do you make about the hatred online? going towards the team which is saying the referees are responsible the calls aren't uh, on both sides they did have a lot of questionable calls but what do you make of that I would say that one people get mad at me I didn't call the game so don't I don't know what you want me to do that was not my job I would say that the refs definitely were in Iowa's favor. I'm not saying they were cheating or anything, but well, Iowa shot 30 free throws. West Virginia shot five. I will also say West Virginia plays a style of defense that is more aggressive. You are going to get more calls more against it, yeah. you. Like, that's just how that works. Yeah. And if you saw the first half, West Virginia, they were kind of getting away with it. That's just not always going to last. And so there was a crazy free throw discrepancy, and Iowa did get, I think, a little assistance for the refs. But for the most part, I feel like the calls were decently fair because because West Virginia plays very aggressive, and that is how they held Iowa to scoring so few points. Like, it's it's tough, but, like, the thing that made me mad, nobody was talking about Middle Tennessee State LSU, which had the exact same issue. Right, right. And our coach isn't getting any article written about her in the Washington Post. Talk about it. <laughs> Talk about it, sis. But I, got, I got a question. I got a question. How do you guys feel about, in the women's tournament, the first two rounds are home court advantage? I love it. I love it so much. And I saw people getting mad because they're like, you know, it's such an advantage for Iowa, which, like, that's kind of the point. Iowa had an amazing regular season. You should be rewarded for having a good season. And so, like, with the men's side, I know they're not at home court, but you see that they try to – 
put teams, yeah, reach, like like UNC played in Charlotte. Like they're doing that on purpose. Yeah. You earn that advantage. Iowa earned that advantage. South Carolina earned that advantage. And you're going to see it in the college football playoff, where the first round is going to be held at the higher seat. Like, but if we you want upsets. It, you earn it. But we want it. That's and the we, reason got, I think. But we got upsets. Duke beat Ohio State. Colorado beat Kansas State. Like. There's you'd see less upsets in the women's game in in general, but you're still getting those upsets and you're getting those atmospheres. Like the alternative is okay, you have Iowa and you know West Virginia go play in Des Moines, and right. yeah, in Des Moines or even worse, like you sometimes it doesn't work out and they're in you know Spokane, Washington, and now instead of having a sold out game where you're reaching decibels in the hundreds, you have you know a 75, 50 right. percent full crowd. Like it's just you earned home court advantage. I love it. Right, and I'm pretty sure West Virginia's coach, when they got off the bus, they told them, look, we're going in here to Caitlin Clark's final game in Iowa. It's not going to be pretty. We're, it's sometimes we're going to be five on seven with these referees, but we're going to have to persevere. And to their credit, bro. That's a great it, coach's speech right there, by the way. <laughs> five on me? seven is classic. What, what happened to the third ref? The third ref is cool? Yeah, he's he cool. He's cool. <laughs> but <laughs> He's neutral. You don't know. Right, but yeah, but for them to show that perseverance, much hats off to West Virginia to going into that atmosphere and actually performing that oh, well. They were so good. And like like the press works well against Lisa Bluter. It works well against Iowa. They they planned appropriately. I th- I do think the West Virginia coach made a mistake by singling out Caitlin Clark before the game, giving some big speech to boosters of how we're gonna send her packing. Right. Know who you're messing with, man. Caitlin's gonna take all that very personally. And when they, it was close in the first half, I please don't hate me, Lucy. I, I already do. I jumped on West Virginia plus nine and a half. Because I'm just like it felt like it was going to be a close game with the way that second quarter went. So I'm like nine and a half. And of course, Iowa comes out third quarter, goes on a run. And late in the game, they won by 10. And I'm telling you, those free throws late <laughs> in the game, like, Caitlin, you could have missed one of those free throws. That's all I needed. Bruh, all about you. Speaking of fire under Caitlin, uh, Gino tried to light some fire under Caitlin this week by saying Paige is the best player in the in the in the country. Check the numbers. What do you feel about that? I'm so sick and tired of the the debate of people being like Paige is. If Paige hadn't gotten hurt, she was supposed to be what Caitlin was. Paige is a very good player. Caitlin is a very good player. I don't understand why we have to pretend that they both can't be great players. They're both great players. Right. Like I don't know what we're doing. Comparison here. is what Juju. The, the thief, thief of, of joy. joy. <laughs> Give me some of that. Lucy Rodine, Iowa correspondent. All right, so earlier in the show, we had the March Sadness bracket, the region for songs. This next region is for the club. We got club sounds here, and it's there's some intense battles going on here. Is it as as Poorly hotly- seated? Yes. Is it? Okay. Right. Well, that's debatable. It is it absolutely as poorly seated? All right, it's- let's start here with a two seed. We have Dabo Sweeney. It was a very popular sound this this year. A caller complaining about Clemson, and Dabo was just not having it. Why are we paying you eleven point five million dollars to go four and four? And it's not just this year. It's been it's been just a refusal to accept. You can have all your opinions if you want, right? I don't know how old you are. Don't really care. Mm. Let me tell you something. Strong. We won 11 days last year. And you're part of the problem, to be honest with you, because that is part of the problem. There's people like you that you think all you do is the, the appreciation. The expectation is greater than the appreciation. And that's the problem. Am I perfect? No. I'm far from it. And I am a man of faith. Absolutely. I'm 53 years old. And there ain't one thing in my life, I've I, I been a part of failure many times, but there ain't one thing in my life that I've ever failed at, Tyler. It was, really just a, it was really just building up to that last yeah. clip of him just being just the most dismissive name you could ever say about somebody. <laughs> so that is going up against 15 seed Michigan coach, interim coach, crying on the field when Jim Harbaugh was not there. Well, I thank the Lord. Well, I thank Coach Harbaugh. I fucking love you, man. I love the shit out of you, man. This is for you. For this university, the president, our AD. We got the best players, best university, best alumni in the country. Love you guys. These fucking guys right here. These guys right here, man. These guys did it. These guys did it, man. Juju, correct me if I'm wrong. That's reminiscent, right? <laughs> Can't hardly wait. It's all about the memories, man. Bro, that was a crocodile tear coming out of that brother's face. 
And Preston? Let, Preston Myers? <laughs> let me remind you, March Sadness is presented by Get Your Guide. Yeah. Discover over 100,000 unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at getyourguide.com. We keep it moving here in the club region. Stephen A. Smith went on an epic rant about Jason Whitlock. <sighs> We're not going to play the entire That's, thing. This is a one seed, right? This is a three seed. And this is just his dismount, and it's one of the best clips of the year easily. You fat piece of shit. And that wasn't a top two seed. And that is competing with Todd Bowles just really not making much sense. Coach, you, you. Uh, looking forward towards uh, Detroit. Um, the weather has been a factor in some of the playoff games, even for the most prepared teams uh, today. It's uh, 13 in uh, Detroit, which doesn't compare to some of the temperatures we've seen it got to. Any special plans to acclimate the team to not only uh, endure, but perform in those kind of frigid temperatures should you face them in Detroit? You do know we play indoors, right? They got a dome. I don't um, No, nothing planned. We're, we're indoors. He was making fun of the reporter yeah, there. I said Todd Bowles. I, I, there's a lot. My head's spinning okay. in here. I'm sorry. We're chucking right a little lot That's in okay. here. It's I mean. okay. It's okay. It's, it's drinking out of a fire hose, right? That's what Dan says. <laughs> hmm. Let's sure. go next. Oh, wow. Let's go next to hmm. five Ad versus 12. Adventurous things. The five seed. This is a great, a great clip of Paul McCartney complaining yeah. about Foreigner not being in the Hall of Fame. Foreigner? Not in the Hall of Fame? What the f***? <laughs> it's the, that's the best clip we have. Five it's seed? <laughs> Fraud, by the way, McCartney. Salute to Because he's dead. Good after all these no, years, though, man. No, Why is he a fraud? Good. He's a fraud, man. I, he, what? He, he was talking about uh, Phil Collins back in the day. I didn't like it, so that was the day. I, back, back when Lawrence from, Olivier was alive. Yeah, man. Like, watch, <laughs> yourself. watch yourself. You don't want thin eyes there, buddy. Who's who, who's uh, the 12th seed? Is there? Mayor of New York Eric Adams just stepping in it? Mr. Mayor, we've come to the end of what was a very eventful 2023, right? <laughs> so when you look at the totality of the year, if you had to describe it, and it's tough to do, in one word, what would that word be and tell me why? Uh, New York. Uh, this is a place where every day you wake up, uh, you could experience everything from a plane crashing into our trade center to a, a person who's celebrating a new business that's open. Uh, this is a very, very complicated city, and that's why it's the greatest city on the globe. 512 upset rears its head again because, boys, <laughs> Eric Adams, if he don't move on to the next round, I'm going to question these listeners for sure. All right. 8-9 matchup. We have Lucy with one of her most epic quotes of the year, I would say. I was getting bitches left and right. <laughs> <laughs> That might be the favorite to come out the whole God, it's so good. Yeah. I was. That's Guess what? One of them texted me back this week and asked if I could hey. hang out. Hey. I'm busy, though. <laughs> Sorry, Lexi. And that is competing with a nine seed. It's a clip of me talking about my wife, and I'm worried that she might be cheating on me. Yeah, Can I be vulnerable for a second? Billy shared, and he was vulnerable there, so I want to be, I want to be vulnerable. Oh, boy. Um, if you find out your spouse or significant other is playing Wordle with somebody... That you were unaware there is it is catching your wife in a wordle game the same as catching your wife at lunch is what uh, I want to ask. What better get on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, can you play wordle that. with someone else? Don't you play wordle with someone? No. Is it a my, maybe words, I'm, maybe, words I'm, with I'm, maybe my name? Maybe words I'm saying words with friends. Words with friends. Sorry, no. Oh yeah, no, you should be the concerned. game where you send words. You back have and forth. generally trouble with words. Is it yes. a, is words it a dude? with friends with benefits? Yeah, you should be. Is it a dude? It is a dude. Oh yeah, okay. Be concerned. Words with friends with benefits. Like like. <laughs> what's the line? Where's the line on like what's going on right, there? Well, you're saying, but this is what you're saying. All right, yeah, Lucy's gonna beat me there. Lucy's gonna beat me there. Feeling real good. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Did I'll, I tell you about the seating or did I tell yeah, you about the seating you know beforehand? What? I told you. Yeah. Tony, you might be on to something. Something's not right with this tournament. All right, we're moving on here, and this is a one seed. The one seed in the club region, and it is a member of our show's grandma. I'm seeing the arrangement that Jessica's grandmother got in queue here that we're about to play, and it is a really nice-looking arrangement, and I have my regrets. Okay, but let's play for the audience. Uh, Jessica, does this need any other setup? Because I'm no, telling you, in reading the transcript, I was just made so happy. How does this woman sound? Please tell me she's got a, a thick, thick accent, and she sounds extra old. She sounds like she's from Chicago, and she grew up in Little Italy. Let me hear this. <laughs> I got the... Jessica... Holy sh! I got the most gorgeous 
roses. I don't think I ever got that many roses in my whole life. Certainly not from your lovely grandfather, God. May his soul rest in peace. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my God. They are beautiful. I'm I'm flabbergasted. I mean, holy shit. I don't know what it's for, but I love you for it. Thank you. You made my day. I mean, they are gorgeous. Holy. I mean, that's a good one, Steve. I mean, that's, oh, come on. That's that run on sentence that ends with certainly from your lovely grandfather. God rest, rest his soul. soul. I mean, come on. <laughs> No. It's like a four seed. I, yeah, I'm, I, oh, it's definitely no. like yeah. it's it's hosting. It's hosting a game. It's hosting but, yeah. for sure. Come on, but, salute the one eight hundred flowers at that. Always, well, yeah, hell yeah. Sixteen seed is who is competing with that, and that is David Sampson with just oh, this is the one. A, a quick, short little clip that we all enjoyed very much. Go pee pee. Hey, it's sixteen just, seed. Hey. That's a sixteen hey. seed. Go pee pee. Let me let me do it again. Let me for, for the people in the back. That's St. Peter's. Peter's. Yeah. yeah, we can hear. Oh, that's, uh, Go pee pee. That's the movie I'm doing for City Folk. Stop. <laughs> yes, that's St. Peter's. 16 seed? I'm predicting it's going to Go pee pee. Go pee pee? That was one of the greatest right. quotes of the year. We're making that a 16 seed? What the hell is Cinefo? All right, we got Thank a four you. seed now. And this is another one from Jessica. This is not her grandma this time, but some of Jessica's best work in the club this year was misogynistic Bane. Face. I don't like smutty either. <laughs> Women a... stay home in the kitchen where they belong. <laughs> and that is competing with the time that I threatened to kill Santa. That's... I threatened to kill Santa. Whoa! <laughs> kill? Like kill murder? Him? It needed to be done. Like de it's not bad enough that that she has to witness Santa dead in a pool of his own blood. If you pee in this bed it's... one more time, Whoa. well, it's my bed. She now has to imagine her father in jail for murder. How'd your wife take that? Famously for murdering Santa. That's right. Bruh, I predict this. Misogynistic Bane will win, go all the way. Making a deep run, I think. Yeah. Well, I agree with that. The, win the region? The the national championship. The national championship? I don't know. Oh, Over you're... nice hat. You're crazy. Oh, it's in the same region as that? No, no, no. but it's, it's going to eventually they get gotta, there. Oh, they're going to win the it's championship. A Never mind. I feel like nice hat. And misogynistic Bane will be the championship. Okay, round. so you're saying they're gonna win the region? Unless they're yeah. in the same side of the bracket, gotcha. then they can't. But ah. it'll be the final four. Yeah. And semantics. Our okay. final matchup of the day in the March in the March Sadness Tournament, which is presented by Get Your Guide. Discover over a hundred thousand unforgettable travel experiences in the U.S. and around the world at GetYourGuide.com. Nice. Guy that got stuck in the vase. He is the seventeen. <laughs> You got it, Connor. You got it. All right, it's a guy stuck in a vase. Yo, the, the most underrated part about that is that uh, salt and pepper shoop is played in the background. I, that's all I heard. <laughs> shoop, 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 shoop. <laughs> so the guy stuck in the vase is competing against. Hold one. on, hold on. Okay. That's a seven seed. That is a seven seed. This seeds. I'll tell you what. It but is competing against a 10 seed, Charles Barkley, one of my favorite clips, him trying to say Sergei Bobrovsky. And I'm going to just tell y'all something. Sergei Bobovka, that's the goalie for the Panthers. <laughs> Sergei Bobovka. Oh, man. So that is our March Sadness update for the day. Make sure to go to our social channels and vote for all these winners. If you're not happy with the seedings, you can control who moves on. So go to our socials and vote. Juju's got misogynistic Bane in the championship. It's yes, gonna, I do. It's going it, to final First, four. maybe nice hat. Nice hat. <laughs> misogynistic Bane. I, I think and Lucy, I get field. bitches left and right, is a tough, tough opponent. It's a tough opponent. Dare I say, I'm just, I'm predicting how. He hasn't the, talked to anybody, by the way. Vote. Yeah, I haven't talked to anybody. Or do, I, do I not know anything, <laughs> brother? But I just know the post. I got my finger on the post of the Lebertard crowd. Yo, I think. Yo, know, misogynistic Bane was one of the, the great revelations of last year, new character. But for the next year, I want this character to continue to grow. <laughs> Muslim <laughs> Mike Greenie. Greenberg. Muslim Greenie. Wait, jail Muslim Greenie. Enlightened Gre Greenie. <laughs> Prison Muslim Greenie. It's, <laughs> I, I keep thinking of the dude in Don't Be a Man a Swan, my brother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> man, I 
that might be one of the most fun things we've come up with in the last, I don't know how many months. The idea of Greenie in prison for just an hour would convert to Islam. That's how you know this a thing is rigged. Take. No me in this. <laughs> Stop the count. I was getting bitches left and right. <laughs> one thing that I really regret not asking David Sampson about earlier is the full-on assault the NFL is having on the NBA. For the third consecutive year, they're doing NFL Christmas. This time, they can't even lie and say, well, it was kind of near Sunday or Monday. It's a Wednesday this year. They're going doubleheader on Wednesday, Christmas. And I'm just like, you know what? You got got, NBA. You got punked out. My man said he want your fruit cup and you have to come up off of it. And there is no squirrel master that's going to save you. Hey, right, I see your milkshake. <laughs> I drink your milkshake. <laughs> do we want NFL Christmas? That sounds like a dumb question. But of course we do. Like, so here's, want- here's my issue with NFL Christmas, right? You got the Christmas. You're there with the family. You're doing either a breakfast or a yeah. lunch or a dinner. You're you know opening presents. You got little kids. They're opening presents. People taking videos. Everybody loves it. But the problem is I got to be locked into my NFL, right? So yeah. then I have to watch Raiders Chiefs in a rainy game on Christmas while my nephews and, and nieces are opening up presents. They're like, why can't you? Uh? And I'm like, well, I, me and Juju Gotti have Sunday Night Live. I need to know what I'm yeah. talking about. Mahomes got sacked seven times. Max Crosby's a beast. I wouldn't know that if I didn't watch. I, I have you smoking for some reason in this. I, go, go, move. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, come on. on. <laughs> With a glass of the finest brandy. What, what, out. what? <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry. Time out. <laughs> the uh, other news in the NFL this week, we got the hip drop tackle band. And for the life of me, I've watched 8 million clips. I still don't know what a hip drop tackle is. It looks like a tackle. All I know is it's going to make every game much more complicated and annoying. I, I, this, That's all I know. For sure. But, like, it starts with I watched the clips of the hip drop tackle, and I said, okay, if they can't tackle like that, then how the hell are they supposed to tackle? That, Put like, a hat and a hat. That's a tackle. That's not a like that's not a, a it's not like a horse collar or something that has a very signature look to it. It looks like a tackle. Now you could tell a hip drop tackle. What's a t- so you're grabbing somebody by the waist and then you're using your momentum to almost like bring them down. The problem is when you're when you're turning them around like that, their legs get caught up. There's been like six tight ends that have had their legs completely destroyed by hip drop tackles. And Jordan Travis. Uh, and Jordan Florida Travis, State. right? Yeah. So but, when you it's the momentum. I think it's the momentum when come here, Jeremy. There we go. We're, 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 we're the video, video audience. We're getting a, so, a so demonstration. Good. He's here. running. Yeah. He's running. I'm, wow. I'm catching him here. And there you then go. I'm turning him nice. on a tackle. I, this hurt. is this. So let me let my, my don't don't sit down yet, Jeremy, because we're gonna take this a step further. And imagine also, Jeremy is not just Jeremy. It's like Nick Tubb or Derrick yes. Henry. So right. you have to do that to him. So, so but now, then I'm like now Joey you Bosa. Can't, now you can't do that anymore. How are you supposed to tackle someone that big running that fast? Well, if he's running from, if I'm trying to catch him from yeah. behind, Woo! I'm yeah. doing a classic shoelace tackle, right? I gotta go Whoa. low. Little, how's your uncle? Well, no, no. that's that's in the pile. No. <laughs> so I'm going low, trying to wrap up his feet, right? right? Or I'm going high and trying to sit down on him, okay. or like lean down on. Unless him. he's a quarterback, then you can't go too low or too or high. Too, you gotta go right yeah, in the exactly middle. Exactly right. Yeah. Have to. It's gotta like, be like a yeah. shoulder. Hey, like Billy. Gut. Hey. Yeah. The shoulder drop tackle seems just as dangerous. Like, right. on, on a defenseless putting, receiver, yeah, it I'm is. I'm just saying, like that. That's not a great option. I'm not, I'm not a happy with the rule. I'm just saying, like, isn't the drop tackle tell. when you just like basically throw all your body weight, like you just like lose possession, like your soul leaves your body and you just fall straight to the ground, and that's how you injure them? Right. Like you just are like, Ugh. You just bring them down with you. Isn't that how you tackle? I mean, no, I'm missing no, no, something. No, here. no, no, Tony, it's, stand it's the it's the turn. It's different. the turn. Wait, that's I, the issue. All right, Tony, stand still. I'll show you. Billy, who's been here all, all the whole time, by the way, just right. I, very he silent. he can actually injure me here. So I'm actually chairs and you know what, Jeremy. Hold on, Jeremy, you do it. Hold on a second. All right, I'm fine. Yeah, I got it. Well, I, no, I, 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 no, Excuse I, me. They don't, I'm here to demonstrate. Yeah, yeah Jeremy's right. got you. Demonstrate. They don't pay no, me enough no, to do that. Look at me. No, I, I, I look at, I look at my men in the eyes when I tackle them. Look at me in the eyes. Wait a second. But it's not. What's right. happening? You're not okay. going to lead with your head. I'm She's showing a proper tackle. tackle. Proper, proper tackle. tackle. Proper tackle. Proper, proper tackle. tackle. Proper tackle. Proper tackle. Don't worry. No, this will go well. Yeah. Don't lead with your head. Right. You don't want to lead with the crowd. No, that's bad. Put your arms up. He's about to tackle him. You got to go through. Oh, God. Oh, whoa. 
Jesus. <laughs> like that. Goldberg. Low man wins. <laughs> like that. And Jeremy's dead. Yeah. He's but not. it was a legal oh, tackle. That's Very legal. Very above board. They actually okay. would have thrown a flag on that. So, I think. No, they wouldn't have. I didn't even you put my body you weight. Can't drop, you <laughs> can't drop him like that. Well, I, I didn't want to hurt him, so it's I didn't, go all I didn't follow through. Him. He didn't follow through at all. I just went through. Yeah. He did not inhale. But <laughs> if you can't do that, what can we do? But that's my point, Billy. Can't even kick the ball off anymore. <laughs> because here's the thing. That Sorry, works. Jeremy. That works face to face. But I'm again, the company. in a situation where. <laughs> you're running behind My knee them. hurts. I mean, you're, you're trying to chase him down. What? You're trying to chase someone them. down. Just wrapping around them isn't going to be enough. Just jumping on them, if they're going forward, they can boost and go forward. The only way to stop someone running away from you at some point is, yeah, is to do Is that. the hip drop bringing them back? For real. You got, can you, boost. Now, you guys, said, you guys said a bunch of guys got hurt recently. Over the last 25 years, how many people have gotten hurt off of that specific tackle? Probably a lot that we haven't thought of. One person yeah. got hurt off a tackle today. Millions yeah. almost, I think. But it's the same conversation you have about the horse collar tackle. How many people got hurt in the horse collar in the last... Probably a ton. We the just the horse watching. collar seems like an avoidable type of tackle, though. This, the, I, I'm, I'm dead serious. If you can't tackle someone like that, I don't know how you stop a guy running away. I just don't. Especially Derrick Henry is hard. Swiping at the feet is like the only way. Right. Right? Do you think that Derrick Henry purposefully didn't sign until the rule was outlawed uh, so that that way he could get more no. money because yeah. everybody realized he <laughs> right. would be really good? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm listening. Yeah, okay. He got his third eye open. There That's it is. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Football Illuminati coming soon. Uh, how do we feel about the NFL lifting off of XFL rules. What rules are you? What rules are you specifically the, talking the about? Kickoff. The new kickoff. The new kickoff. Where? What are the new kickoff rules? Oh, I'm glad that you asked me, Juju. <laughs> the new kickoff rule is now that there's a kind of a receiving zone, and so now instead of the players starting all the way back and running 100 miles an hour and then crashing into each other, they're all kind of bunched into a smaller zone, so that eliminates kind of the speed of the, these collisions when they happen. They're more close quarters to begin with. Want a demonstration, Jeremy? Yeah. <laughs> right up here next to Absolutely you, not. No, you just stand right in front of them. You're good. Mark it, Jeremy. I nope, think, it's done. Look, for player safety, whatever advancements need to be made, I feel like I'm with it. I think they should start – playing in those big puffy practice helmets they're so adorable number one and also they why not if y'all practice in them it it seems illogical i feel like they're just really uncomfortable right because it's so much more on top of you you know what else has is to be heavy, uncomfortable right? concussion syndrome that's very uncomfortable CTE. that's true <laughs> CTE. i have that now you you, you know what's what's funny is uh, and this is this is my ignorance so y'all gotta bear with me when i heard the NFL has new kickoff rules, and they're taking them from the XFL. I swear to God, I thought it would. Remember the first XFL where they put the, the ball? The best kickoff. And oh. they had to run, and the first guy to get to the ball, that's who got the. Like dodgeball? Yeah, like dodgeball rules. That's what I thought, and I was like, holy shit. That would be awesome. <laughs> I'm locked in now. Here we are. That's what gets you back into football, that man? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> XF, old XFL rules? Absolutely. Next up, jerseys where I can have my nickname on them. He hate me. One of the best jerseys out there. Ever. Yeah. One of the best jerseys ever. I defy. Oh, speaking of jersey talk, I have a question. Uh -huh. So yesterday on my way to Heat Warriors, I see a guy wearing a, a Wade jersey. But it's not any Wade jersey. It's a Heat culture Wade jersey. Well, clearly Dwayne Wade did not play when they had the Heat culture jersey. Dangerous game, I mean. And, People don't like it when you bring that up. Well, I just want to say, like, this, this jersey's rather new, but Dwayne Wade wasn't here for this. He was somewhere else, right? So my question is, is there any other player for any other franchise in sports where you, where you will see the new design – for that old player. so Yep, Udonis Haslam. Probably a ton of, like, legends. Right, Penny Hardaway. I've n I have never seen a Penny Hardaway m modern Orlando jersey. Matter of fact, Shaq. I I'll say Shaquille O'Neal. You've seen a Shaq yeah. modern? They got a whole bunch of Shaq uh, knockoffs and moderns. I'm I've not seen, talking about knockoffs. I've seen Marino. Knockoffs, I've seen Dan Marino, like, with the new logo. The really? New logo. For yeah. sure. Wow. I don't I've think this is – I think this is pretty common. Yeah. I've never seen it. Pretty comms. <laughs> okay, okay, so, okay. Let me, let me take it another level. How many of those legends own another team? Mm, not affiliated it. with the franchise anymore. Why'd you just throw your pen? Because How I'm, dare you say Dwayne Wade's not affiliated with emphasis, the franchise? Yeah. Emphasis on the right syllable. I can't think of any other owners or people affiliated with jerseys. I'm not sure the logistics of this yeah, at all. No, well, I'll give you the logistics. Grant Hill is a, a current part owner of the Hawks. I don't see current Grant Hill 
Pistons jerseys. I do see I, the, the Pistons. The modern one, Motor City. You see the Motor City with oh, Hill Motor on the City. back? That's what I'm talking. I'm not just talking about jerseys. I'm pretty sure if you go to Detroit into no. that arena, you can find you a Motor City Hill, Hill jersey. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. First of all, not going to Detroit. It's not going to happen. So quit asking. <laughs> Maybe in the summertime. Yeah. But not, not now. Not in season. Even though Monty Williams is probably upset about it. Monty Williams, lots of complaining about the Knicks this year. Seven. Lots of complaining about the Knicks this year. Let's throw that out there. Speaking of in season, do you think the Lakers with this in season tournament uh, trophy, is it going to matter at all next year? Like, because the Lakers had such a decline after winning that, mm -hmm. do you think the same fervor and the same vigor is going to be uh, the curse? Attached? It's now it's becoming the curse of the in season tournament, right? Because they they won it and now Unless they're falling they straighten off. up because they're looking good. They looked good last night against the Bucks. So, well, everybody who played an in season tournament in Vegas, other than Pelicans, Pelicans have done better. But like the Bucks kind of struggled, the Pacers they struggled, the Lakers clearly have struggled, the Pelicans who got blown out. The only ones that are actually doing well. So the in-season tournament, bad for basketball <laughs> on the next Dan Levitard show. But since we have 50 seconds left, okay. I think that we should – I mean, Halliburton was one of the stars of the in-season tournament. Yes. And the, the low management situation has gotten – Without being eligible for the awards and playing a certain amount of games, I feel like he hurt himself by trying to be eligible for, for some of these awards. And I think that that has kind of hurt the Pacers' chances moving forward. Absolutely. Same thing with Joel Embiid, who literally hurt himself trying to do that. But, uh, guys, I've had such a fun time. I also hurt myself. I think yeah. there's concrete underneath this carpet. <laughs> I'm excited for Tony Brackett's coming up in the do we post have a game. Oh, yeah. yeah. We do have a post game with Tony Brackett's, who's what, in which percentile? 96 percentile of all brackets. I'm so proud of you. you know, just hey, you know what? Stuff. You and me. Wow. Are you? <laughs> Whoa. Are you my, real Dan never, <laughs> my real Dan never plays catch with me. Hey, I look, I'm your step Dan, but I'm the Dan that stepped in. Thank you.